today's episode, I chat to Philip Dibella, pioneer and master coffee maker behind Dibella Coffee brand. Philip's vision 17 years ago was to bring a coffee drinking experience unlike any other to the Australian consumer. The brand that is created has not only become a staple in cafes and high-end coffee retailing, but it's now become a global brand. Let's find out how Philip did it. So buckle up and let's get going. Hey guys, welcome to season two of Drive with an Entrepreneur. What a great way to start season two of our show. We've got a very special guest. Philip, come on in. Hey Philip. How are you, Nero? I'm good, Philip. How are you? Good. How's things? Yeah, good. Good, good to see you. You've been looks like you've been waiting there for a while. Oh, not too long, not too long. Yeah, no but, worries. Um, I'm glad you showed up. Uh, it looked a bit strange sitting on the side of the road. <laughs> huh? No worries, man. Well, it's a beautiful day. Uh, Matt, you built a great brand, and that's why we are here to talk about. Let's get going. Fantastic. All right. So, Philip, uh, let's go to the early days, 2002. And, and and you know you see the birth of Dibella coffee yes. T- tell us about that journey what what inspired you to start this business yeah look I am um, I'm a son of migrants my parents migrated from Italy uh, to, to Australia many many years ago 60 years ago I was born in Australia and I grew up my dad was always a coffee fanatic he loved coffee um, and coffee to me represented um, community represented people people would come over and, and it brought a lot of fam- families together it did it? it did yeah. it did you know you come to visit our house coffee goes on the table we visit somebody else and it was all about food festivity community connection conversation all the beautiful things that happen um, around coffee and it's no different today yeah um, but I was for me it was about having a business my dream was always to be in control of my destiny to start a business um, that I, I could I could run and employ people and and have that shape and and really coffee's the product but what I'm very proud of is to me we build a brand that's around people mm, mm. Um, and that that's what I'm um, that was always my vision yeah. is to build a business and a brand around people yeah um, and that's what the inspiration was, yeah. was to, to build a brand and and be in control of my own destiny by building my own business yeah and the product happened to be coffee happened to be coffee all oh, right mm. okay and and you know c- coming back to this coffee uh, Philip you you talk in, in, in fact you talk quite passionately about Dibella coffee being a, a, a experience as opposed yes. to just a product that people Correct. buy off the shelves. But yeah. t- tell us more about that. Yeah, well, look, coffee's coffee's so synonymous to people. It's part of their life. Yeah. Right. And especially to Italians. I mean, in Italy, it's so synonymous that they just they have four, five, six coffees, mm. have their coffee, keep going. Yeah, it's part of the lifestyle. It is. Much, it's yeah. all part of the lifestyle. Yeah. And um, and what I saw here is people were starting to drink a lot more coffee. Yeah. People were, were enjoying it, but they didn't know a lot about it. Yeah. Um, and so I saw an opportunity to be different. And you know, and that's where I say entrepreneurship is all about looking at something and saying, how can I do it different, or can I be first? Mm. Now, I wasn't going to be first to sell coffee, but I could be different. And, yeah. and different to me meant let's take a product industry and turn it about service. Yeah. Let's take something that's about a product and an exchange and make it more emotionally engaging. Yeah. L- let's make it a bit more with a bit more soul, a bit more heart, and and let's make it about people. Let's teach people about coffee. Let's teach people about how to drink coffee, where it comes from. And again, along the way, we thought, well, let's start celebrating the farmers, which yeah. are going to people. Yeah. Let's celebrate the roasters, which are people. Let's celebrate the baristas. Let's celebrate the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you pretty much built a whole culture around this pretty much coffee bean. You know, correct. Isn't correct. It? Which yeah. we call the ultimate coffee experience. Yeah. Yeah. And the ultimate ultimate coffee experience was off the back of a program called Crop to Cup. In order to create the ultimate coffee experience, we had to. Um, understand and own the process mm. from crop to far uh, to crop to cup yeah which means starting at the farms right through to the consumer we had to make sure that we could not only control the process but we would educate people on each of the process yeah and and that's that whole spirit of emotionally engaging with people and working with people beautiful and and you know it's very interesting they say that you know educating the customer what was the market at the time like philip because mm. obviously you know, Australia is a huge coffee drinking nation. Yes. Uh, you know, you don't. Uh, most people don't even start a day without having a coffee. Yes. Uh, and 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 I guess there is some degree of brand loyalty, whether it's a cafe or a brand that people consume. What was the challenge for you as yeah. a new entrant back in 2002? You know, going into mm-hmm. that, although you were different, although you were Correct. a category innovator. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's always challenges, right? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. The challenge with anything when you're new is to get people's trust. Yeah. 
that's a and good that's, point. Yeah, and that's the big thing is you've got to get people trust. You've got to earn their trust. And to me, if they like you, they trust you. Yeah. And if they trust you, they like you. Yeah. Um, and so the biggest difference we did was we made people like us. And we made people like us because we showed we care. Mm, so mm. for the consumer, we said, well, in Australia, you like coffee, but you don't like putting sugar. So yeah. we're going to create coffee that doesn't need sugar. Yeah, yeah. We know that you like putting milk in your coffee. So we're going to generate, we're going to build a coffee product that you don't need sugar and it tastes good in milk. So that's what we did for the consumer, mm. right? And mm. we show that we care for you, we like you, they then trust us. Yeah. For the, for the customer, which was the cafe owner, we said, you know what, you could buy coffee from anywhere. You can buy coffee from a supermarket, you can buy from a competitor. Yeah, yeah. I want you to trust me that I am here to help you make money. So I'm going to work with you to help you. I'm going to help train your staff. I'm going to service your equipment. I'm going to introduce you to new suppliers. And I'm going to build this trust that I care about your business and that you mm. will then want to do business yeah, with and, me. Yeah, and it's sort of win-win. It is, uh, and for, the key word there is care. Yeah. Um, you know, the, if people say, give me a magic ingredient in business, it's not just trust, it's care. Yeah. And when you start to show people you care, they start to trust you. Yeah. And when they start to trust you, they like you. And when they like you, they trust you, and you start to see how it works. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's not just business. I mean, I do a lot of work with politicians, mm. and I say the same thing. You, if they don't like you, they're not going to trust you. Exactly. So as a politician, how do you get people to trust you? Well, they need to like you. Yeah, and, and you... Well, obviously, you know, um, you promoted hand roasting, yes. right, uh, back in the day. Yes. Is it, what was the story behind that? Is that a sort of way for you, you thought, you know, you could add more quality to, to, to the consumer? Just with more that controls. Or more control. Yeah. More controls. And what I wanted it to do is rather than about process, and mm. of course you need to have all these processes, because yeah. people think a lot of entrepreneurs don't have systems and processes. I can tell you I've got system processes for everything, for, but yeah. I don't make it the problem of the customer. Yeah. So the whole experience of hand roasting and artisan roasting and, and opening it up instead of it being hidden behind a closed wall, yeah. open it up, was to help part of the trust. Yeah. It was part of the emotional engagement. Yeah. So that I'm roasting coffee, you can come and you can watch me roast. You yeah. can be part of me roasting. You can be here with me roasting. Yeah. You don't it's not a, something that gets pushed behind the doors and you don't know what happens. What, what happens, right? Yeah. So it's not sort of commercial like let's say Starbucks who, who actually I guess fair to say that they've kind of failed in Australia. Mm. Um, you know it's it's pretty much the opposite spectrum well, of, of Starbucks, a is, a Starbucks, good Starbucks one. well Starbucks is a good one because they're doing that now you know I just got back from New York and mm. I visited their their artisan roastery yeah. which is funny enough the same thing I built 15 years ago in Melbourne wow. so the roasting warehouse in Melbourne yeah. which is still there today in Leveson Street I built that with my business partner 15 years ago and now this is what Starbucks is doing 15 years later and saying yeah. it's innovative and new well yeah. it's not yeah. but Starbucks is an amazing business an amazing mm. brand mm. and mm. they look after their people yeah but they're a classic example of what happens in business when you think that one model fits all yeah and so yeah. when they came to Australia they presumed that we would want to drink coffee like the Americans yeah and they didn't yeah. now I've got business so, in America yeah and I've changed my model to suit America. So it's in America, you know. And and you know, we were talking about India the other day. You yeah. you change it to be in India. Well, That's right. Sri I have Lanka, got business in India. You yeah. got to change to the geographic and demographic of the public. Yeah. To yeah. me, what's made me different, Nero, is um, I'm a consumer-facing person always. Yeah. It's always about the customer. Yeah. And you yeah. build your process and your systems around your customer. Mm. And of course, you've got to have a vision of where you want to be and what your brand is going to be. But you build the business around the customer because if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. And uh, just for the audience there, we are going slow because there is an accident there. Yes. Um, Unfortunately, somebody's yeah. facing the wrong way Someone's in the bushes. facing the wrong way. Would you, would you symbolize that as Starbucks in Australia? <laughs> oh, right. Actually, that's a good idea. Facing the wrong way facing in the wrong the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Right. And so, hopefully uh, everybody's okay. Yeah, and again, look, nothing against Starbucks. You know, it's a business show, and and this is what we are about. You know, we we talk business. All right, so um, yeah, we're back back on track. Um, and and what was the landscape actually like at the time, Philip? Yeah, uh, you know, you obviously fall into a, a specialty coffee yes. retail. Is is that right? And, yeah, and, yeah, and that's and, gone full circle. So at the time, yeah, it wasn't. It, so at the time, 70, 80 percent of people in Australia drink instant coffee. Mm, mm. Um, and now over time, through me and through a lot of other good companies in Australia, um, we've educated the market, the change, and consumers' tastes have changed. Yeah. Um, we then so you saw the emergence of what we call specialty coffee, which yeah. meant you start to understand and specialty more as a system and a process rather than a product yeah so yeah. as a product specialty 
means the coffee scores higher than 82 mm. etc but specialty to the consumer is more about understanding where the coffee came from tracing mm. it to origin the it's been words. roasted it's yeah. been specially designed to according to flavors yeah. it's yeah. made by specialized baristas yeah so as an industry that's what specialty became oh, okay. and that still exists yeah yeah. It, it is still, everyone now is more discerning. You're paying $4, $4.50 for a coffee. You want it to be made well. You want to understand that it's come from good farms. Yeah. It's fresh. It's made by a good barista. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. the, the consumer's uh, demanding. Yeah, I guess it's a bit like drinking wine as well, isn't it? I mean, would, would you say, I mean, you can, Very can, you can show up and, and drink wine if you like, but you can sort of study, as you said, where it came from, the yes. process, Different farms, uh, different know, regions, different farms, and, and it's all about sort of that experience. Totally, yeah. totally, and yeah. that's important. And the consumer loves it, right? Yeah. Um, to me, it all comes down to emotional engagement. Yeah. Um, some people want to know more. Yeah. Some people want to know less. Yeah. Our job has always been, we can teach you whatever you want to learn. Mm. If you want to learn a little bit, or you want to learn a lot, you can even come with us to the farms if you want to come and see yeah. how the coffee's grown, manufactured. Yeah. Um, yeah. It really is about you. You know, I the one thing that I always say is I've never been here to dictate to anybody anything. Mm. You know, I'm mm. happy to share, I'm happy to discuss, I'm happy to have a conversation like we are, yeah. but my job is not to dictate to anybody. I mean, I um, they always talk about me as a leader. I'm a leader, not a manager. I'm not a boss, I'm mm. a leader. Mm. And mm. people say, well, what's the difference? Well, there's mm. a big difference between. Yeah, yeah. A leader is very clear of what the vision is and where you're going and what you're doing yeah. um, and then helps people um, to achieve that. The leader is more of a mentor um, you know, rather than being a disciplinary person. person you know? That's right. And, and let's talk about the distribution strategy for uh, Nibel and, and I know you sort of touched on it uh, briefly there as well. So you were focusing initially on high-end yes. ca cafes and consumers, wasn't yes, it? Correct. And, and you were, were you sort of at that time focusing on the coffee conscious? Totally. Sort of, uh, totally. you know, the buyer at the time is so so purposely that's what you did, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So we had a very very clear vision of where yeah. we wanted to be, and then we started yeah. to target our audience. Yeah. And uh, we made sure that we were chasing the right audience for the right product that would help us create obviously the right brand. Mm. And mm. and that became an important part of our strategy, right? Yeah. Um, for argument's sake, we never went into a supermarket shelf at the time. Yeah. yeah. Because. You know, our biggest competitors had coffee on supermarket. Yeah. But that became one of our best strategies. Yeah. Is to say to a cafe owner, why do you want to serve coffee that you can buy in a supermarket? That's right. In your cafe. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not a specialty product. It's yeah. not a discerning product. It's yeah. not a point of difference. Yeah. So we really made sure. And then what happened was I found that most other companies were using distribution companies. I wanted to control the distribution. Yeah, you want to remove the middleman. Middleman so I can deliver a better quality product cheaper. Yeah. So to me, and the strategy today now globally still, um, especially now that I've come back, um, the global strategy is to be the world's best coffee manufacturer, mm. the right product for the right price to the right audience. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're in the business of sourcing coffee, manufacturing coffee, yeah. and then selling coffee. Yeah. Without yeah. it complicating it. You know, that's what we do as a company. Mm. Um, and we can do that for people that want the best champagne in the world. Yeah. Uh, we can do that for people that just want sparkling wine. Sparkling wine. We that's can right. do from top to bottom, we can do anything in terms of coffee manufacturing. Yeah. And that's the global platform now for Debella. Yeah. It's a global company. But again, you see that that is, you know, being in control of the whole channel from crop to cup. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. All right. And um and you know we sort of touch on uh, sort of globally um, going global a bit later on as well. Um, oh yeah, you said you were global. How do you actually localize your product for this various market? And you said New York, and did you say you were in India now as yeah, well? Yeah, we've got, we've got uh, business operations yeah, in India. Yeah, and all sorts of what sort of your localization strategy yeah. is it to do with? Do you change the product much, or is it how it's accessed, yeah. or the marketing, well, maybe a bit of everything? Well, it's a bit of everything. The first yeah. thing is again the strategy and the template's exactly the same. Yeah, we identify what problems need to be solved. So step one is always around what are the problems that need to be solved in that marketplace. So in India, we own cafes, and the reason we own cafes is because the problem there is the emerging middle class. Mm. The, they're not big, big alcohol one. drinkers, yeah. Yeah. they like to go to cafes, yeah. parents want their children somewhere safe, yeah. um, so we built cafes and we're doing really, really well. Yeah. We've got and I guess they also shops. have that little appeal of a Western brand. Yes. Maybe that's sort of and they uh, love the Western yeah. brands and, they, and all the rest of it. So yeah. we yeah. built the business model around the problems, uh, which created the vision, and 
and all the rest of it there. Yeah. Um, in, in America, they're very similar to where we were in Australia 10 years ago. Mm. There's an emerging cafe scene. Yeah. People are looking for better quality coffee. They're moving away from drip filter coffee to real coffee. Real coffee, um, yeah. There's a cafe's opening, but there's not a lot of specialty coffee suppliers. Yeah. So yeah. that's the business model there. Yeah. So the template always is, and I, even when I'm mentoring or talking to people, I say, Identify what problems exist mm. because that will define how you become relevant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're just yeah. going to open another coffee company, if you're just going to open another coffee shop. Yeah, it's well, not a me too product, isn't it? You know? Totally. Yeah. Pretty much you just say me too and then you, you'll be dissolved quickly because you don't have uh, uh, USP. Correct. Isn't it? You need yeah. USP, yeah. right? You need relevance. Yeah. And I said to people, the best question to ask is if you close your doors tomorrow, who, can somebody replace you? Mm. Yeah, you know, and good, I can honestly good say, point. Yeah. and I can say that if the Bella closed, nobody can do what the Bella does in terms of service and, and support and from crop to cup. Mm. You know, and that's what makes the Bella so relevant and such an exciting brand, yeah. especially now that it's going global. That's the exciting part is that we're such a relevant business because of what we can do from crop to cup, from start yeah. to finish. Yeah. Well, did you did you always have this at the back of your mind, Philip? That you know you will one day obviously you probably wanted to be a global company but did you sort of think that it would happen this quickly or yeah. the way, the way uh, well just... I sold the business um, yeah. and, and exited in 2017 yeah for that reason yeah to put it in the hands of a company that could go global because yeah. I wasn't the right person yeah now through great opportunity and obviously a new board um, I've been given the opportunity and the tools to take the business global. Mm. So did I think it would happen like this? No. Yeah. Um, I'm very grateful of the opportunity, um, as I am very grateful of where it was and where I've come. Mm, mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's quite surreal, but I'm excited and yeah. it, um, I've got a lot of energy. All right, Philip, 17 years ago you started this brand called the Bella Coffee. Yes. Um, and then you developed into, into a uh, nationwide, uh, pretty much global uh, brand yeah. now, and and you you sold it. Yes. Tell us about this 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 uh, you know selling process. Who the buyer was and, yeah. and why why you actually sold this yeah. uh, business. So um I officially exited 30 June 2017. Yeah. Um I finished my earnout period and the rest of it. Yeah. And the reason for selling was. I, um, I got to meet Richard Branson many years ago and spend a week at Necker Island mm. and we had some great discussions oh, over yeah. hours yeah. and um, one of the key things that Richard Branson said to me is you've always got to leave something in it for the next person. When you, the time to exit a business is when it's time to leave something that somebody else can build on. Now for me we built Australia's number one you know, specialty coffee brand, number one in, in terms of volume into cafes, number one in terms of brand and I saw the next step global. And it wasn't me that was the right person to take it global at the time. So I did a deal with Retail Food Group who mm. uh, were looking to become more of a coffee business and, and, and be outside of just franchise. And obviously given the economy now, lucky they did do that. Yeah. Um, so it was the right fit. It was the right values. They mm. wanted to keep the Bella and, and build it into a global business. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I exited in 2017, 30 June. Mm. I went and did some consulting for them, for others on the other side of their businesses. Yeah. Um, and recently... Um, the exec chairman, Peter George, the new exec chairman that's come in to, to represent the shareholders and turn the whole business around, said we want to become a global coffee company yeah. and we want, obviously, somebody that's an expert in this and that's you. Yeah. So I'm now the executive chairman of Debella Global yeah. uh, and I'm obviously very excited about where it can go and what we can do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. The, the catalyst for selling was to leave you know, some room in there for the next person to build on it. So mm. for anyone that's mm. out there aspiring, um, obviously building their own business, yeah. I would say always build the business with your exit in mind. Yeah. Whether it's one year, three year, five year, ten years, you should always build the business based on how you're going to exit yeah. and leave yourself options to exit at the end. Yeah. Because there's many ways to exit your business. Like I was offered to float the company, but I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to give up control. Mm. I didn't want us to work in the business, but not own it. Mm. Um, you know, if I floated the business. Um, so you've got to understand what your end game is and where you want to be and yeah. understand your why, understand why you want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was obviously I wanted more family time, I wanted more personal time, mm. uh, so I had to exit the business to be able to do that. Yeah. And yeah. obviously now I've been able to work on, you know, spend more time with the family and, and have a good system in place. I've been able to focus on me and, mm. and lose weight and get healthy. Yeah. Um, I'm now ready to come back and take the challenge on globally yeah. to take the Bella to where it can be. To, to where it can be. So pretty much we will be seen anywhere we go that we could or, or, or a fanatic of Dibella coffee would be able to access 
Mm, uh, either a, a coffee retailer, you know, selling it, or, or yeah. maybe off the supermarket. Well, in uh, one way, shape, or form, you'll see yeah. hopefully De Bella. So whether it's supplying franchise owners, whether it's roasting coffee for other roasters, yeah. uh, whether it's supplying cafes, uh, whether it's um, capsules, we will have a product for all markets. Mm, mm. Um, and we're again, we're not just one brand; we're multiple yeah. brands that we can create for people. Yeah. We're a coffee manufacturing company. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. the global um, platform. Yeah. Is to be a global coffee manufacturing company for all markets yeah. the right product for the right audience for the right price beautiful um, and that's our that's our standpoint and obviously my my love is about building people building teams so I've got a team in America a team in New Zealand and and several teams obviously across Australia yeah yeah um, and now we all work as one brand develop mm. globally mm. to manufacture coffee globally and mm. supply and so so the heart and soul of, of Dibella remains the same, is that right, uh, Philip? You know, obviously Correct. it's global, more people, there's probably more opinions now here and there, yeah. but what you're saying is the, you hearts, know, yeah, the hearts are still the same, the soul still the same, the values, values. this values. is what we're about, you know, yeah. but we now are on a global scale, or we think global. Correct, it's correct. About what it's yeah, it is, it is. You think global, uh, You put the, that comes with the process and systems, but the mm. process and systems should never affect the customer focus. Yeah. So, and that's what happens in a lot of businesses. People become so procedurized and systemized that they actually forget about the people. Yeah. And so our job is to make sure that we get the people side right. And the strategy is always around the people, mm. always around solving problems that um, the market has. Mm. And then naturally, you will build the right product, the right business, the right system for the audience. Yeah. So I won't go into India and build something that is not relevant. That's I won't true. go to America and build something that's not relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And and Philip, beyond this, right? You obviously have another world around it where you are involved in quite a bit of charities. Yes. And and, and I guess things close to your heart. Do, tell us about what yeah. you're involved in. So I've always loved children. So to me, it's always about children. Um, and that came from a love of not only me being around great people that love children, and my family was very close, but it comes from when I started the business people said well there's so many coffee companies there's 1,000 coffee companies plus um, how are you gonna be different and I used to say there's only the future mm. now there's only the future is a very good statement relating to children yeah and it doesn't very matter good. you know where yeah. they are and who they are right now it's what they're going to become so I said well part of being you know corporately responsible I want to do a lot of work and my mantra and my my focus will be around children so I've supported Royal Children's Hospital um, my boxing fight coming up for charities for kids helpline mm. uh, but uh, you know the big one a legacy item that um, we've built myself and my wife and we'll continue to do is uh, the pajama foundation okay. um, we take 40 children uh, and their carers which is all about foster care so children in foster care is the pajama foundation um, every every the second week of December uh, we take 40 children and their carers away on a one-week holiday to the Gold Coast Beautiful. and we pay for the whole lot yeah and this is at a time where most children are talking about holidays but these families don't normally get no, to no. go yeah and yeah. now there's 40 there's 40 families that get to go on holidays yeah because we pay for the whole thing yeah and that is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done yeah yeah uh, the, the letters you get back and the video you get sent from the children saying mm. thank you I've never ever seen the ocean yeah or it, I've it never really hits the you in the heart isn't it it does yeah. and, and yeah. you know what it's part of me being my what I get out of that is gratefulness um, I want to help people accelerate their potential yeah what I get a real real buzz and excitement out of seeing people succeed mm -hmm. um, and that to me is what means more than you know any dollar signs and, and bank accounts and because when we go and we all go yeah no one's here forever yeah um, the thing we remember about people is the moments and the way they made us feel that's right that's a well, so. that's a great great point there um, Philip now for, for all the young entrepreneurs watching our show, right? Yes. Uh, and I know you sort of touched on this uh, pretty much throughout the show. Give us quick five, you know, quick five, five points of what made, you know, what sort of attributes that made you successful. And I guess, um, you know, for someone who wants to start a business, yeah. who has an idea, what are some of the five things yeah. that they should do right now to yeah. So go with the idea. Oh, well, in no particular order. Yeah. So no particular order. Yeah. Number one, you know, one is be authentic. Mm. Be authentic in everything that you do. Yeah. You know, be authentic. Create something that's authentic. Yeah. Not something that doesn't mean anything. Because if it's authentic, it'll have meaning. It'll have purpose. Yeah. It'll have relevance. Yeah. But also be authentic in yourself. Yeah. Um, the second, you know, and again in no order, vision. If you can't see it, and I, what I mean by vision three year, five year, ten year, if you can't see the outcome, 
then you can't build it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You need yeah. to be able to see it. You need to be able to visualize it, draw it, write it down. What's the end game? You know, what is it? Um, three, get comfortable with the worst possible thing. Mm. So that's my risk management. Mm. You know, get comfortable with the worst possible thing that can happen to you. Yeah. You know, and once you're comfortable, don't let anything hold you back. Yeah. Don't yeah. ever let anything hold you back when yeah. you're comfortable with the worst possible thing. Um, four, communication. Yeah. The common denominator of uh, failure is communication. You know, poor communication is when things fail. Um, and that's whether it's written communication, body language, whether it's communicating, talking, mm. everything's communication, the way we dress, the yeah. way we act. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be very conscious of that. Be very, very conscious of the way you communicate in all matters because that's what will set you apart, yeah. you know, in, with success or failure. Yeah. Um, and a fifth one, um, probably resilience. Really resilience. Yeah. Um, you haven't failed until you stop. As they say, mm. you haven't mm. failed until you stop. Yeah. Uh, resilience doesn't mean that you won't stop. Yeah. Resilience also means that you're able to pivot. Yeah. So if you're doing something and it doesn't work, mm. change. Be open. Be open to change. Be open bit, to huh? change. Yeah. That's part of resilience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, giving up is not resilience, mm, mm. right? And, and and giving up doesn't mean that you don't change. I've got to echo those thoughts, you know. Yeah. And there's a famous saying that, you know, you don't get better at something by doing less of it, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And probably, just to finish, I know you asked for five, but mm. I'll give you one oh, extra. Sure. Oh, go for it. Um, no. It was yeah. something that, that I, I probably never even um, put on camera or, or spoken about live to anybody about, is just show up. Just show up. Simple uh, like I've that. given that many people opportunities, but I've never made anybody. I can't make anybody. Mm. No one made me. Yeah. But people gave me opportunity. opportunities. And but you know and what, you what happened? There. I showed yeah. up. Yeah, you showed up. I showed up. And that's what I said. A lot of people say, You've helped a lot of people and you've done this. I've given people help, I've given people opportunity, but they've made themselves. I haven't made anybody. That mm. would be such an arrogant thing to say. They've so. made themselves, they've they've done well, they've succeeded because mm. they showed up. They showed up. Right? And that was the same with me. I had a lot of people, you know, good and bad. I learned from a lot of bad people what mm. not to do. Mm. The difference is I showed up. Yeah. So, you know, you can listen to these things. These are wonderful and I love doing them. You know, yeah. and obviously congratulations for what you're doing. Because oh, you. you're having an impact. But the person that is listening needs to show up. Yeah. If you don't show up, it doesn't happen. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. Well, thank you, Philip, for showing up thank on this you. show. <laughs> thank you. Uh, what a great story it is, Philip. Uh, starting 17 years ago uh, from a small shop and, and you know developing it into a global brand. Yeah. Uh, the lessons learned along the way, um, and, and I guess giving the Australian consumers and and, and, and the global consumers a, a great product, great experience of drinking coffee. Philip, thank you very much thank for coming you. on the show. And thanks for driving uh, safe. Uh, no worries. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, you know, we barely ever to crash. Well, with this but, many cameras, uh, you can't not drop safe. Yeah, either, yeah, right? yeah. And uh, all right, well, thank and you. I wish you all the best with whatever is uh, you know, in store for Gibella. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.